Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a paid code program for kids called Code Monkey. So stick around and I'm gonna let you know how I incorporated it into my homeschool. Code Monkey is an online coding curriculum for kids in pre-K all the way through eighth grade. After making my Teach Coding to Kids video that included a bunch of free resources on helping your kids learn to code, I really wanted to try out one of these paid coding programs and kind of see what the difference was. I was looking for something that was game-based and very easy for my kids to do independently. This wasn't something that I really wanted to spend too much time on. I wanted them to just kind of learn as they went. I wanted to add in some coding into my kids' curriculum for two main reasons. First is that it promotes a lot of critical thinking and logical thinking in my kids, as well as giving them more computer literacy skills. In this day and age, technology is everywhere, and I don't want my kids to just know how to be consumers of technology, but understanding how to use it and how to create it as well. So what is CodeMonkey? CodeMonkey is a online coding curriculum, so all you need is internet access and you'll be able to have your child access all of the lessons. CodeMonkey is a paid program and so prices will vary depending on if you need an individual, a family, or a homeschool account. The differences kind of range in more students or more teacher accounts and the homeschool account even includes lesson plans. The program offers a free trial that you can log in and get started today without even having to put in a credit card. If you don't want to create an account but you still want to check out CodeMonkey, you can try their Hour of Code mini lessons. So these are just little samples of the lessons that you would get if you had a full account. All right, so let's quickly jump into the different programs that you can access with CodeMonkey. First, like I said earlier, CodeMonkey is available all the way for pre-K through eighth. So pre-K, they're probably not typing, not even reading. So how are they gonna start learning to code? Well, CodeMonkey is using block-based coding. So everything they need to know has minimal words and they can just drag and drop whatever they need to do in order to make the sequence work. So they start out very simple with Code Monkey Jr. where you have a little monkey and he's trying to collect bananas and they have simple arrows and they have to put, you know, however many arrows it is to get to the monkey. So it might be three rights. It might be three rights and an up and another right. You get the picture. For your first and second graders, they still also have a block coding option and this is called Beaver Achiever. And this is the one that I have the most experience with because this is the one my kids started using last year and have basically mastered this year. Beaver Achiever has a bunch of different activities that all use block-based coding. So there's minimal words. There are some, like they do have the word loop, so kids can start recognizing some of these basic words as they're creating their code. But it is really nice to just have that drag and drop ability to be able to have kids not have to worry about typing or the keyboard or any of that, but just starting to understand the logic behind how coding works. Once your child has an understanding on the block-based coding, they can move into text-based coding. The first program is called Dodo Math, which is for kids in grades two through four. And so what this program does is it helps kids learn math through coding, which is really awesome. So they have some angles that you can work with. They work with addition to try and make sure that your code is as short as possible when trying to move different lengths. And um, it's just really, really entertaining for the kids. Next up is the basic code adventure where you have a monkey that's trying to get back his bananas from a big old gorilla. And this is text-based coding for grades three through five. Now, my third grader just started this program. So again, that's all I basically know is that the monkey is going to be getting bananas and using code, but using text-based coding instead of just block coding. One thing I did wanna note is in the beginning, they actually have buttons at the bottom where you can click them. So if you need to say, turn, you, the student does not have to type it out on their keyboard. They can actually click the word turn and it'll write turn for them. And then they need to write, um, you know, left or 90 degrees or whatever it might be. So I really like how this is just an extra little support for younger students to not have to worry so much about the typing and the keyboard just yet, but they're able to still see what the code looks like in text-based form. Next up is advanced coding and even some coding creations. These three programs are for grades six through eight and include Game Builder, Coding Chatbots, and Banana Tales. I don't have a lot of personal experience with these three 
activities, but they are something that is even more advanced hex coding for those sixth to eighth graders that you might have. Another feature I wanted to point out if it's important to you, CodeMonkey is standard aligned with Common Core and the, the K through 12 computer science standards. Again, I love how this curriculum is laid out that it can be student independently run. They keep working on it. If they get something wrong, the computer will kind of correct them and try to show them what to do, and then they move on. And so as they progress, they're gonna get to harder and harder levels. But if you are someone that wants to actually sit down and teach these concepts to your kid kind of one at a time, if you have the homeschool option plan, then you are able to get lesson plans and you can even incorporate this into your homeschool day where you sit down and go over the topics covered. And this is also another thing, if you find that your student is getting frustrated working independently, you can jump into that lesson and kind of give that lesson to them and help them that way. Even if you don't know anything about coding yourself, the lesson plans are laid out to where you can easily teach them what they need to know so that they can master the lesson they're having a hard time with. How do I use CodeMonkey in my homeschool? Well, I just have CodeMonkey as an option available when they are playing on their computers. When I set up my kids' computers, I make sure that when they open up the, their Chrome browser up at the top in the bookmarks are all of the websites that they are allowed to access. And so CodeMonkey is one of those websites. If you wanna see even more about how I set up my kids' computers, you can watch a video about that here. But so basically, CodeMonkey is up in the bookmarks and they have several other websites that they can access. And so it's just one of those options when they get free computer time. I love that CodeMonkey is game-based because even though my kids think they're playing a game, but in reality, they're learning computer literacy skills along with coding and logic skills. Would I recommend CodeMonkey for everybody to have in their homeschool curriculum? Yes and no. I do think that coding in itself is something that all students should kind of start to have a grasp on, but at the same time, there are free programs that you can use if you've never used coding. I wouldn't recommend jumping into CodeMonkey and then start paying a monthly fee and then realize that you don't actually use it as much as you thought you would. So definitely try out some of the free versions first. And if your kid is going and going and going and loving it, then you might want something that's a little more in depth. Um, but again, some of those free resources that I mentioned in my video are really, really awesome. So that could be enough for you. But if you're looking for something a little extra, then Code Monkey might be able to fit that bill. Are you already using coding in your homeschool or are you thinking about starting? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to get more homeschool content just like this. See you next time.